Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Wilson Tsai. I am the founder and the director for the Heartburn Center of California. Today I would like to speak to everyone about surgical treatments for reflux surgery, uh, otherwise known as gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, I think in order to talk about the surgery, it's very important to understand first the pathology or the reason why people can have reflux. Uh, <clears throat> In order to do that, I think it's very important to draw what we call normal anatomy first before we talk about uh, the pathology from that. So what we see here is in normal anatomy, we see this. What this is is basically a picture of the esophagus, a picture of the stomach, The function of the esophagus is to transport food from your mouth down into your stomach. When that food goes from the mouth to the stomach, it essentially gets processed by the stomach and subsequently is transmitted into your small intestines where it's digested uh, for nutrition. The food in the stomach should stay in the stomach and should not go back up into the esophagus as in many patients who suffer from heartburn or reflux disease. If you look at this anatomy here, what we're seeing here is that the esophagus basically travels from the chest through the diaphragm and into the abdominal cavity. If you look here at the way this mechanism exists, it travels through the chest, through the diaphragm, through a hole in the diaphragm that we call the diaphragmatic hiatus. And then a little portion of the esophagus resides in the abdominal cavity and about three to six centimeters of this esophagus should reside in, a, in the abdominal cavity. The reason why this is important is because of the fact that when that happens, that sets up this pressure gradient that we call the lower esophageal sphincter to prevent reflux from happening. Now in a patient with a surgical reason or a mechanical reason for reflux, the most common being a hide or hernia, what happens is this. The hole in the diaphragm is a natural hole, meaning that we're all born with it, or else if we didn't have this orifice, the esophagus can't be uh, you know, transmitted from the, the mouth to the stomach. So this hole in many patients can get split open or becomes wider. So now if the hole becomes wider, what happens is that the stomach gets pushed up into the chest cavity. So the way we look after that is we look like this. So what happens now is that now that the stomach is pushed up into the chest cavity, the lower esophageal sphincter, esophageal sphincter, which is integral to prevent reflux, is now disrupted because it's been shifted into a cavity which has a higher pressure, and now it is shifted into a cavity, which has a lower pressure. So that essentially dis, uh, <clears throat> eradicates or gets rid of the pressure barrier that prevents reflux from happening. So what many patients experience is when they eat, especially a couple hours after, eat, after they eat, or when they lie down or you know, late at night, they feel that typical heartburn symptom where they feel burning in their lower chest or upper abdomen, they can feel persistent nausea. They can feel regurgitation of food contents up into their mouth. They can have persistent coughing, shortness of breath. These are all possible symptoms of reflux. <clears throat> well, when this happens, this is a mechanical problem. And so unfortunately, mechanical problems really can't be treated effectively or permanently with medications. The medications are designed to essentially decrease the acidity of the stomach contents, so when reflux happens, people just don't feel that sensation anymore, all the while regurgitation is happening. So the surgical treatment, or the permanent treatment for this, is what we call a laparoscopic Nissen fundoplication. Laparoscopic meaning small incisions, about one centimeter to 0.5 centimeters, where we go in with a little camera, and we go in and essentially reduce this hernia so that way you have the stomach back into this correct position. When this happens, what we're trying to do is get this stomach 
to come down so that way the stomach is back down into the abdominal cavity. And more importantly, we want to make sure that there is enough restoration of correct intra-abdominal esophageal length. Meaning we want to make sure there's enough of the esophagus that extends back down to the abdominal cavity so that way we can have the natural barrier effects take place to prevent reflux. <clears throat> this is done by mobilization of the stomach out of the chest cavity through small incisions, through laparoscopic techniques. And when you mobilize the hernia <clears throat> out of the chest cavity, now the stomach rests in the abdominal cavity without any tension. Now it's very important to mobilize the stomach correctly because of the fact that if you don't, then tension could pretend, uh, can continue to pull that stomach up into the, chest into the chest cavity over time. After we reduce the stomach into the abdominal cavity, <clears throat> then what we do is we need to fix the hole in the diaphragm by sewing the hole together. The diaphragm hiatus actually looks like a zipper. And so if you can imagine this being a zipper with the right side of the zipper and the left side of the zipper and the esophagus runs right through it, <clears throat> what happens is that the hole in the diaphragm actually splits apart like that. So in order to close that zipper, well then you basically close the zipper in a natural formation by bringing the two edges of the right and left crews together. So that way this hole becomes smaller so now the zipper is closed just enough to accommodate only the esophagus up through that hole. After repairing that diaphragm, basically that prevents the stomach from going back up into the chest cavity, what we do is we measure the esophagus to make sure there's enough esophageal length extending into the abdominal cavity to prevent reflux. And then we actually do a procedure called a Nissen fundoplication. So <clears throat> what you see here is the stomach, and we take the stomach and we move it around, or we wrap it around the esophagus very much like a hot dog bun goes around a hot dog. And what that does is it basically increases the pressure around the lower esophageal sphincter to prevent reflux in the majority of our patients for a lifelong duration. <clears throat> that is a surgical treatment or the mechanical treatment for a mechanical reason or a mechanical etiology of reflux, which can happen in many patients. This surgery is not designed for everyone. It's basically designed for people who meet the standards for it or meet the criteria for fixing a hiatal hernia. Those include <clears throat> patients who feel that their medications are continuing to increase over time. So for example, a, patient is, uh, a patient's reflux is, is uh, treated initially with one pill and they start feeling they will need two pills, they need two pills twice a day, where we start seeing an increasing in the dosage or frequency of the medications. It's, treat, it's a, a, a consideration for patients whose medications do not stop the reflux or regurgitation. It's for patients who have a complication from reflux, which it could be Barrett's esophagus, which is precancerous lesions of the esophagus, esophageal strictures, esophageal ulcerations. It can be a, a consideration for patients with complications of reflux, such as uh, dysphagia, meaning the food getting stuck. Uh, as well as people with persistent asthma, shortness of breath, um, persistent coughing. These are all possible candidates for consideration for surgical treatment for this disease. The surgery usually lasts about an hour to an hour and a half in most patients. <clears throat> most patients are admitted to the hospital overnight where they go home the next morning. Most of these patients are on a specialized diet after surgery. That diet consists of a one week long uh, duration of a liquid diet. What I do is I place patients on a three-day uh, course of thin liquids, water, juice, Gatorade, um, uh, coffee. Then they're advanced to a thicker liquid diet, pudding, yogurt, soft serve ice cream. And then finally on the day seven, they're advanced to a soft diet, ground beef, scrambled eggs, chicken, fish, and things like that. The surgery is very well tolerated in most pa patients <clears throat> um, so far. Uh, uh, the operative mortality rate has been less than 0.2% in our hands. Luckily, we have a 0% operative mortality rate. Uh, but again, this is surgery, and again, surgery needs to be considered carefully in every patient. I thank everyone for their time today. 
please feel free to check back together with, uh, back together with us at the Harper Center of California. Everyone have a nice day.